Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. Welcome to Throwback Thursday. We're in the magic back room at Baxter Cycle in Marnie, Iowa, and look what they have laid out for us today. I've actually wanted to do this bike for quite a while. Just an absolutely gorgeous example of a 1963 Triumph T120 Bonneville. Check that thing out. There's a tag, by the way. Just a good looking machine. Good looking machine all the way around. Just look at all that little detail. This has been restored, I'm sure. Just look at that. Absolutely gorgeous in every way. Every little detail sparkles, shines. Just a real beauty, real beauty of a machine. So what is it? Well, it's a 649cc overhead valve, parallel twin. There they are, air-cooled. Valves are up here, cams are down here, front cam and a rear cam. Points cover right there, that famous Triumph heart right there. Kickstart only, gear shift, it's a four-speed transmission. I'm all carburetors, those are monoblocks. Let's see if we can get a better look at those. Dual monoblocks, I think that's what makes it the 120. Yeah, right there, look at that. Tank shutoffs right there, isn't that just gorgeous? I just love these things, just love these things. Primary case right there. Uh, I think this was the first year of the unit transmission. I think that's right. If I've got that wrong, somebody uh, comment. A little bit just it's just it's a real piece of art isn't it it's just uh i just love these things how do you tell it's a 650 well you got the space here between the shifter and the uh kickstart you've got the nose on the engine you got the more pronounced heads just a real good looking thing and of course the tag says 650. <laughs> uh single tube frame full cradle frame it's lugged there's lugs on it right here the brace you know the pipes are brazed into the lugs just a really good looking thing. Girling shocks, I believe those are. Swing arm on the back. Up front, she's got a, let's see what my notes are here. Eight inch single leading shoe brake, full width shoe. Just look at that, isn't that just gorgeous? I just love this whole thing. You know, this looks so light compared to modern bikes, but uh, I, I love the fact that it's got these covers on it. It's got the gold, the cream, and then the black stripe through the middle there. Just really well done. Absolutely love it. This is, uh, if you had a flat, you'd unhook this and use that to hold the front tire up while you repaired the tire. You know, pulled the tube out and did your work. I'm guessing that's steel wheel spokes, of course. Just beautiful. Look, look at this detail. I mean, look, look at this badge. This flat top cap, you know. This little uh, parcel rack. These knee pads. Just a very unique looking thing. I love the air cleaners. I don't know if those are stock from the day or not. This is an oil tank. You know what, let's open the seat. Check that out. Just beautiful. Battery. Amazing, amazing. I like it. Uh, it's coil ignition. The coils are up here underneath the tank. I don't know if they'll show on the camera, but that's where they're at. Just a really nifty job of everything. I love all of this work. On off for the fuel right there. Fabulous in, in well, where, you put, where you put the oil in for the tank. Gorgeous. The loop here. Shock mounting points. Look at that, huh? Gorgeous. I love the pea shooter pipes. Kickstart, of course. I'm not sure what this is. Is this at the speedometer maybe or yeah, it could be. I'm not sure again. Like I said. Uh I'm going to go clutch cable on that one because it moves when I do the clutch. Yeah, I'm going to call it the clutch cable, my friends. Isn't that just gorgeous? These very delicate oil lines on the top. You know, I love the way these oil lines look. I understand why we don't use them anymore. You know, they're prone to leaking. Everything's internal anymore, but uh, they still look really sharp to my eye anyway. So the oil would come up to the top of the head through those lines, go into the valve train, and then it would uh, fall back into the engine through the uh, down tubes, I believe. And then from there, get pumped into the tank by the oil pump. Just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Isn't that just, wow. Sparkling, let's look at this side. This side we've got a, let's see, seven inch brake, single leading shoe, probably a half width shoe in the back. Of course, the mechanical, you know, brakes. Y'all know I love these. Right here is the microelectronics of the day for the brake light. 
wires you can actually see, things like that. Just amazing, isn't it? Pea shooter pipe, Triumph foot pegs, the famous flat Triumph seat, which isn't quite flat. Gray top, black side, gray on the bottom. You know, it's just a beautiful thing. I'm guessing there's supposed to be a knob there, but I, I don't know what it's supposed to look like. Um, Bonneville T120. Fabulous. And of course, that big badge again. Chrome headlight bucket. Let's jump up here and take a look at this stuff. Clutch lever. Nice grips. Horn. High lows is my guess on that one. Steering dampener. Then jumping over here, throttle, brake lever. Ah, well, two, two cables because of two carburetors. Older bikes usually had one cable for one carburetor only. Modern bikes that have one carburetor that still have two, uh, two cables, a push and a pull. But uh, anyway, up here, Smith gauge, tack, sweeps down this way. Same here with the Speedo. Made in England. And that just looks so delicate, so pretty. There's a guy here in Iowa that rebuilds these. And he can reprint the faces. He can recrimp these cases. He can restore, rebuild. You know, I bet he could even build new. But anyway, a little ammeter up here. Like I said, string dampener there. Isn't that just art? This whole thing is just, you know, the center line through the tank, the flat top tank, the parcel package, the badging. Just so well done, so well done, you know, going down the protruding chrome pipes, you know, with just a glint of gold from being ran. Absolutely gorgeous. This is the tack drive right here. Just amazing, amazing. Fabulous, fabulous. Speedo drive must go into the bottom of the transmission right there, I'm guessing. Just, wow, you know. Like I said, the kickstart right there. Even the shifter looks cool, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of a trait from the old Triumphs that have carried on to the new Triumphs. It's just the quality, the look of quality that these bikes have. You know, real, real machine of its day. Real machine today. It's about a three gallon gas tank. It's 11.3 liters. Wheelbase on a bike like this would have been about 54 and a half inches. That's 1,384 millimeters. Seat height, 32 and a half inches. That is 825 millimeters. Ground clearance about five inches, 127 inch, 127 millimeters. The weight, and I couldn't find if this was dry or wet, but uh, 336 pounds, that's 165 kilograms. Now this bike put out about 46 horsepower is my understanding. Eight and a half to one compression, 46 horsepower. Just, uh, you know, they've been, that's a pretty good power to weight ratio. Very nice. I just I just love the way this thing is done. And the overall look of this thing is just a real, this is what a classic motorcycle looks like. You know, this is a 60-year-old machine. You know, center stand. I mean, it's just, it's just a fabulous thing. Just an absolutely fabulous thing to look at. It's like a piece of fine jewelry. Absolutely love it. Like I said, I've been looking at this one for quite a while. Here's the adjusters for the uh, chain. And uh, we finally got to it today, thank goodness. A bike like this will not last long. I love it, I absolutely love it. Now if y'all are interested in something like this or a newer used Royal Enfield, newer used Triumph, classic vintage British bike like this or that Royal Enfield over yonder or these Nortons over here or the BSAs back there or you know, there's a matchless in here somewhere, a couple of them actually. These are all 650 Triumphs. I think these are Tridents over here and a couple of BSA triples over here. Um, just an amazing couple of uh, old, I think there's a 68 and a 1970 Royal Enfield or Reander twin. Just a whole slow, there's a, there's one of the matches as I can see there. A couple of aerials back in the back corner. If y'all are interested in something like this, look at this beautiful boat tail. Get yourself over to BaxterCycle.com. They can help you out over there. They are Baxter Cycle is also the largest vintage British motorcycle parts supplier in North America. They've got warehouses full of this stuff. They don't have it. You're gonna have trouble finding it, is my guess. Uh, but I mean, just look look at this one room alone. I mean, there are hundreds of gas tanks in this room. This is not the only room full of these things. That whole area up there is full of uh, Lucas Electronics and things like that. There's warehouse beyond that. There's stuff beyond that. And there's several buildings around town full of these kind of parts. Uh, get yourself over to Baxter Cycle, Marnie, Iowa. Or get yourself over to BaxterCycle.com. They ship worldwide. Those guys can help them out. Tell them Fuzzy Biker sent you. Now it's a beautiful day outside. I'm going to go hop on my motorcycle, my Triumph, and go for a ride. Y'all do the same. Life is good. Wahoo.